The life and death of Isambard Kingdom Brunel, or the intriguing highs and lows of Britain's most prolific engineer. On the 9th of April, 1806, a child was born who would change the world forever. Isambard Kingdom Brunel was one of Britain's greatest engineers. He changed the landscape of the United Kingdom throughout the Industrial Revolution with his bridges, railways, tunnels, trains, buildings, ships, piers, stations, locks, boats, hospitals, sewers, lighters. Born to Marc Brunel, a famous inventor of his time, and Sophie Kingdom, the daughter of a naval contractor, Isambard was educated in Paris, France, then trained under Abraham Louis Bréjou, widely known as a clever man. He returned to England a fine, intelligent young fellow with big ideas and little legs. Despite being such a successful and respected figure, Brunel's life was plagued with difficulties and misfortunes. He lived a life of extremes, from the most incredible achievements to the most unfortunate of accidents. What he lacked in height, he more than made up for in character. He was charming and articulate. He had to be to persuade people to fund his revolutionary projects. He did, however, have a short temper and couldn't stand idleness. I'm awfully sorry, sir, but the rail tracks aren't ready. One explanation for Brunel's prolific working life was that he often worked through the night, sometimes only sleeping for four hours, sometimes not at all. Brunel was supposed to have smoked over 40 cigars a day, which he kept in a purpose-built bag, never leaving his side. He also wore a big hat. He built one of the first underwater tunnels in the world beneath the River Thames and nearly died in the process, but he did save an old man. He had a hand in the upkeep of Bristol's floating harbour and designed a boat to clean up its muddy rivers. It looked nothing like this. He designed and built the Great Western Railway, which initially ran from Bristol to London and then rapidly grew across the country under his expert guidance. It should be noted, he did not achieve all this on his own. He had the help from thousands of navvies, who were often loud and or drunk. Brunel designed two huge train stations, Temple Meads in Bristol and Paddington in London. He is also rumoured to have invented the double buttocked bar stool. Despite his various commitments, Brunel managed to find time to marry Mary Horsley of Kensington, London. They had three children for whom Brunel would bring back souvenirs from his work. What did you bring me, father? A piece of coal? Next, Brunel turned his mind to conquering the ocean. He designed the Great Western, the first steamship to cross the Atlantic. However, it nearly cost him his life when he fell off a ladder on board. Once recovered, he created a colossal 3,443-ton steamship, which was the biggest vessel in the world. She was called the Great Britain, and was made not of wood but iron, and had a newfangled propeller. He was once performing a party trick for children, and accidentally swallowed a gold coin. It caused painful fits of coughing, and eventually only came out when he was hung upside down and shaken about. A lesser-known feat was designing the world's first flat-pack hospital, which he sent out to the Black Sea for the Crimean War, where it was assembled perfectly in less than two months. Probably his most famous monument came about when he won a competition and designed the suspension bridge in Bristol, but he did not live to see it finished. Brunel's last project, his final achievement, the cherry on the proverbial cake, was a ship that was five times bigger than any other ship in the world. The Great Eastern was made of iron, had paddles and a screw propeller, and weighed a colossal 30,000 tons. A man was killed when they attempted to launch her. After this, Brunel took a holiday to Egypt with his wife and their son, Henry. When he returned home, he went aboard the Great Eastern for the last time and posed for a photograph looking pale and weary. He had a stroke moments after the photograph was taken and was rushed home to his family. Over the next few days, he deteriorated and eventually died in his sleep, aged 53, in 1859.